Hey everyone, Hybrid Toy Reviews here, wanting to take a look at the Star Wars The Black Series New Republic Security Droid from The Mandalorian. This is a figure I was going to pass on, but then I saw it in the store and just had to have it. And actually a buddy is who hooked me up with it. He found it in the store and sent me pictures and I decided I wanted it. So thank you TJ for that. If you're watching this video, I assume that you like The Mandalorian, just a little guess. And if you like The Mandalorian, perhaps you might like... This artillery stormtrooper. I'm giving it away when I hit a thousand subscribers. We're very nearly there. So why don't you subscribe? When I hit a thousand subscribers, I'll put out a video thanking all a thousand of you, and then that video will be where you can enter in on the drawing. But we're waiting for a thousand subscribers. So if you would like a chance, then do your part. Hit subscribe, and when we hit a thousand, the drawing can begin. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the review for this figure here. You guys know the drill. As always, we'll start by taking a look at the packaging. This is your standard Galaxy packaging with your Black Series logo up top. A big window showing the droid and his gun accessory off well. we got the Mandalorian and the orange stripe there. New Republic Security Droid Warning 4 Plus Hasbro. This side of the box features artwork of the droid looking cool. I will say they're not the most intimidating droid, but it's cool. Down at the bottom says New Republic Security Droid. Around this side you have a wraparound window, your wraparound orange stripe, and your Black Series logo. Way around back, you get a Star Wars Black Series logo, a zoomed-in artwork from the side, a bio in varying languages. You can pause and read whichever language best suits you. He's number 23 in the Mandalorian lineup. Got a bunch of legalese with barcode and legalese underneath. A little window up top. That's a little bit of light in the packaging if you're the type to, you know, keep your figures in box. That's not me. I open them. So let's go ahead and cut to him out of box, and we can actually see what we're getting with the figure. Alright, so here we have our new Republic Security Droid out of the box and on the turntable. As always, we're going to go ahead and start by taking a look at the accessories. He only comes with one, but at least it is the most essential accessory, being the dro the uh, you know the Security Droid Blaster. Looks very similar to a lot of the Rebel Trooper Blasters. Might even be the same mold. I'm not super up to date on them. In a nice gunmetal gray color. Has a nice silver paint on the tip of the scope and barrel. And truthfully, there are some kind of modern Mandalorian esque prop, you know, details on it. You know, you can kind of tell what the props are from what series or movie they're from, typically. And this does give me kind of Mandalorian ish vibes. So I suspect that this probably is at least a retool of an older one, but it might be reuse. Looks very good. And he has a really well sculpted trigger finger that nests into the gun very well. He holds it very nicely. Only the one accessory. I will say the only thing that I might have asked for, and I feel like I'm being greedy there, is maybe like a swappable hand that has the little, you know, spike coming out that, you know, the Mando tore the droid's arm off of and used it to open the door with the control panel type thing. That might have been a cool accessory, but ultimately we do end up getting a really good figure, wrist spike or not. So, let's just go ahead and take a look at this droid. I gotta say, I really like what we're getting here. It is not the most maximum intimidating droid ever. And honestly, you guys remember that kind of like weird, like, it, it was in Hollywood, but it had indie movie vibes. It was chappy. It was like a police droid or something that got taken over by, like, insurgents, whatever, freedom fighters, or I don't know. I saw the movie like eight years ago. But... I look at him, and at least with the head design, I kind of get chappy vibes from it. I don't know. That was my first thought when I saw it. But I do like with this figure, it is complete head-to-toe a new sculpt. Now, I had heard that it was either at the Celebration or the San Diego panel, might have been Celebration, that the Star Wars design team had mentioned that they were going to try and reuse K2SO parts, but the limbs were just too long. And honestly, good on them for not just doing that anyway and making the droid too big. Um, it actually looks really good. And a lot of what we're getting here is going to be reused on the upcoming HK droid from Mandalorian Season 2. So, you know, if you like what you get here, you're probably going to like that figure. So let's go ahead and run through some details. I'd say, let's take a look at the face, but really it is just, you know, a, a head. Um... But it's a very nice looking, you know, droid face, no real mouth, just a lit up orange or yellow, you know, visor with a little antenna up top. Got that uh, flat top head of haircut going on there. The sides of the back of the head kind of almost, as I fumble them, 
you know, almost sort of looks like protocol droid on the back, except for that kind of, what is that, a restraining bolt or something in the back of the head? I really like this detail on the upper back with like a little like security port and a ton of buttons and a little info screen. Little New Republic logo there looking nice and whatever this port is in these vents. Just a lot of detail on the back. I really do like it. And a lot of sculpting around the waist. A little bit, you know, just sticking up in there. Around front, he kind of has this kind of like divoting, you know, center area with these orange buttons and another New Republic uh, symbol there. A lot of good detail on the front and the waist, like I was saying. The hips kind of drop down on these sort of like spindly, you know, posts to the upper thighs. The legs are good too. The elbows, wrists, and ankles all feature clear pegs, so you can see through and, you know, not necessarily super focused, but you can see through and it gives the illusion of it being an open, you know, pivot point. I really do like how that looks. And uh, he, uh, he has some pretty good grippers going on down here with those toes. But, yeah, a droid with toes, what do you know? Actually, I will say I really do like overall the general aesthetic of what this droid has going on. To run through some articulation, he features a double barbell like neck joint, which allows him to look only that far up before the back of the head hits into the back of the, you know, the back. He can go pretty far down though, rotate, and of course pivot. He can raise his arms not up to a true T pose, only that high. But then you can 360 him at the shoulder, and there's no butterfly. I don't think that's a butterfly joint. I think that's actually just bending the peg. He has a single-jointed elbow that can go to exactly 90 degrees and then rotate at the elbow. 360 above the wrist hinge, and then the hinge goes in and out on both sides. He features a mid-torso ball joint. I was going to crunch that far forward. Pretty good back. And some side-to-side -side and, of course, twist. The legs can only kick out that far apart because of the drop-down design, but he can kick, you know, basically straight up. And likewise, pretty far back. That's really good for Black Series. But these spindly droids really do allow for that. It features a sort of like an upper thigh rotation up in there. And then with single-jointed knees, it can go just past 90, rotate above the knee joint. The feet rotate. No, they don't rotate, but they have a hinge that can point straight down, straight up. And then there's a side-facing hinge under there. I thought for a second it had a point of rotation at the ankle, but no, it doesn't seem to. So, truthfully, for articulation, this guy's pretty stellar. I gotta say, I really do like, you know, just all of the range that he has. It's weird. It's one of those figures like Q90 where it's like, man, I don't really necessarily care about the character. But man, is that articulation just fun to work with. For some size comparisons, here is the Jetta Patrol Stormtrooper, basically just doubling as a new Stormtrooper. And here is, as I bring him in and fumble, the Mandalorian. And the droid stands very slightly taller than your average 6 inch height figure, which really does kind of fit the vibe. I would guess they'd be like a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, in, in person type thing. So it works out really well, and I'm honestly digging it. Super cool figure. So here he is on the spinning stand in a sort of action-y pose even, and he's holding it pretty well. I will say, this is the fourth time I've tried to film this bit, as he uh, is a little bit top-heavy. He does have a little bit of Mike Wazowski vibes going on, sort of like a round, heavy body with very skinny legs and arms. There's nothing wrong with that, but it does make some of these more dynamic poses a little bit easier to topple him over in. But he's handling this one pretty well, and this is about as intense as you'd ever get him in. You know, he's two-handing his blaster with a, you know, splayed foot stance. You know, he is, you know, shooting down a hallway where a lot of rioters are coming. And honestly, that's all this guy needs to do. He looks really good. And when I put him on the shelf, he's going to be basically just in a, a neutral, you know, at attention sort of pose. And that's totally fine. But he's a cool droid. I really like the articulation we get with him. And I got to say, I he is a, he is a hidden gem. Um, I truthfully... Very much was going to pass on this figure until my buddy found him and sent me some pictures, and he looked neat. But I also watched Out of the Basement's review where they were kind of like a little bit put off by how good it was, too. Uh, I think Justin did that one. And honestly, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a hidden gem type of figure. It has a lot of good sculpt and work put into it. So, like, do I recommend it? Yeah. 
And I totally get if you don't get it, because, you know, he is kind of like a one-off droid. I get the pass on him. And I don't see anyone army building this guy. I don't see anyone saying, yep, gotta buy eight. But I, I might pick up a second. It might be nice to have a pair. You know, just two. No, no more. Just two. I, I could see myself doing that. I mean, uh, Landspeeder Luke has put out some really good 3D printer files of, like, the doors from the prison ship. I think it'd be cool. I think it would be really cool to, you know, have at least one more of these. It'll go good with that Migs Mayfeld coming out in a couple months. So, yeah, I... Uh, I think this is a good figure, and I recommend it. But if you pass, I, I understand, too. He's not the most, you know, interesting character. So, that's pretty much all i got to say about him. Thanks a bunch for watching. Leave a like and comment, you know, all that good stuff. I love interacting. And subscribe. You saw that bit in the beginning. We're giving away that artillery stormtrooper. You definitely want to be a part of that. So, subscribe and keep an eye out for the 1,000 subscriber video. I'm going to go. Thanks for watching. means a lot that you did, and I'll catch you next time. Until then, may the Force be with each and every one of you. Bye.